Our focus in this video is monetary policy. And we're asking the question, do higher interest rates help to control and cut inflation? Well, this is a big issue clearly in the UK at the moment. So since the spring, summer of 2021, inflation in the UK has been on an upward trajectory. You can see from the chart here, the annual rate of inflation measured this time by the Consumer Price Index, the CPI jumping from below 2%, below the target in the autumn of 2020. In the spring of 2021, all the way up to 11.1% in November, I think it was, 2022. Now, since then, it's come down a little bit, currently at 10.1% at the time of recording this video, which is April 2023. But inflation remains high. And the fear is that this is not a transitory increase in inflation, that inflation may become a little bit embedded and entrenched in the economic system. And that clearly has consequences. Now, interest rates, of course, have gone up as well. The central bank, the Bank of England, which is independent of government, has a remit to meet a 2% inflation target. And uh, the interest rate, which having stayed below 1% for more than a decade, from 2009 all the way through to uh, November 2021, interest rates have gone up. There were 11 successive increases in interest rates, taking base rates up to their current level of 4.25%. And we don't think that interest rate increases are finished yet. Let's put the two charts together. Blue line here shows inflation. Be familiar with this data, please, for the exam. Super important. Inflation, currently 10.1%. Base interest rates, 4.25%. Now, monetary policy is likely to be a hot topic in 2023 in exams because the rise in interest rates has happened over the last couple of years, and it's not just in the UK as well. Bank of, uh, of uh, European Central Bank has raised interest rates. The Federal Reserve in the United States has raised interest rates as well. In many countries, the rise of inflation has led to a tightening of monetary policy. Now, in what ways are interest rates designed to control inflation? This might be worth thinking about from a revision point of view. You might well want to just press the pause button on this video and maybe jot down two or three ways in which you think interest rates going up, which is a tightening of monetary policy, is designed to control inflation. Well, there are many ways in which interest rates going up can control inflation. Here are just three of them. One is the, on the demand side of the economy. When the central bank lifts interest rates, UK had gone from 0.1% to 4.25%. Then it makes it more expensive for businesses and consumers and households to borrow money. The cost of credit goes up, including your mortgage. So you have less effective disposable income to spend. And it also, of course, in theory, lifts the incentive to save, assuming that interest rates on savings deposits also go up. Now, if aggregate demand is uh, subdued, a fall in AD can then help close a positive output gap. That's where GDP is above potential. And that can bring demand pull inflation under control. So the main way in which interest rates are designed to control inflation is by controlling and subduing dampening, if you like, the growth of aggregate demand. Second key one is often missed out by students. Definitely worth adding to your revision notes, please. A higher interest rate, monetary policy interest rate, may cause currency appreciation. You see, when interest rates go up, perhaps they've gone up higher in the UK than one or two other countries. It becomes more attractive for foreign investors to hold assets in that domestic currency, in particular putting savings deposits in the banking system. So high interest rates, in theory, attract inflows of hot money. That causes the exchange rate to appreciate. And a stronger currency makes imports cheaper and uh, can also affect exports on the demand side, of course. Uh, but the cheaper imports can then help to lower cost push inflation. The third one is about expectations. You see, the level of actual inflation influences people's expected inflation. So one of the reasons why the central bank might be raising interest rates is that it's committing, it's sending a signal to the markets, to businesses, to consumers, that it's committed to keeping inflation low. Now that commitment can, in theory, again, help to reduce inflation expectations. You might well have revised the Phillips curve as part of your macro uh, preparations for the exam. Falling in inflation expectations can in turn lead to a change in wage bargaining behaviour. People might be asking for slightly lower wage claims, perhaps lowering cost push inflation. Notice here that I'm using the word perhaps, can, might, not, will. 
Uh, it's very important when you get a question on policy that the effects are often theoretical. They should happen in, in reality, but they're not necessarily guaranteed to do that. Now, interest rates going up are designed to curb inflation, but of course there are trade-offs with other objectives. Higher interest rates mean more expensive credit, and that can have a negative effect on the UK economy. Again, maybe press the pause button here and think about some of the consequences of interest rates going up, which are downsides of a tightening of monetary policy. Well, here are three. One is that the housing market is likely to suffer. Uh, the house price is not included in consumer price inflation, but the housing market is really pivotal to the economy. So higher mortgages, for example, uh, risk causing a fall in demand for housing and therefore a drop in house prices. So there could be a negative wealth effect. And that could flow through to a fall in new house building. So if there is a reduction or a contraction in the construction of new homes, that's going to affect construction output and investment and jobs. Another aspect which is worth thinking about is that mortgage rates are going up. Well, often landlords will have maybe bought a house using a buy-to-let mortgage. So higher mortgage interest rates will increase costs for landlords who might then pass on those to tenants. Now, many of those tenants could be on low incomes. So there's a risk there that tenants might suffer some of the flow effects of higher interest rates. Corporations face higher debt payments. Interest, of course, is a fixed cost of production. Many businesses in the UK did borrow heavily to survive during the COVID pandemic. So higher interest rates uh, brings about the risk of a jump in business failures, particularly small businesses, perhaps, that borrowed in hospitality and tourism and leisure. And that will have consequences, of course, for unemployment. So we're seeing restaurant change, for example, closing, closing down branches. We're seeing the cinema industry under threat. A lot of businesses borrowed heavily at low interest rates during the pandemic. Now they're having to face up to the cost of uh, borrowing going up. Now, higher interest rates, of course, might tip the UK economy into recession. And, it, it, and another negative effect, conceivably, is that investment could suffer. An increase in borrowing costs might cause a fall in capital investment, investment in new machinery, new technology, and so on and so forth. Now, if investment by firms goes down, that will have consequences for long-run aggregate supply, and the productive capacity of the economy might take a uh, take a, a, a hit. Now, if you have less productive capacity on the supply side, the risk here is that that will uh, uh, cause higher inflation in the future. Whenever the economy picks up and starts growing again, if we haven't invested enough, we won't have enough supply-side capacity. And those supply chain problems might rear their heads again and inflation might start rising sooner rather than later. Another part of evaluation uh, is that it's important to note that raising interest rates is not a guaranteed way to control inflation. Some people are arguing that the rate rises we've seen, the rises to 4.25%, in practice, by the way, this is a great evaluation for us, in theory, interest rates should control inflation, but in practice, they may have little direct impact on inflation. So why might higher interest rates have a limited effect on the cost of living crisis? Well, first of all, most of the surge in inflation, we think, in the last couple of years in the UK and other countries, but let's focus on the UK. Most of the surge in inflation has come from external shocks from outside the economy over which a central bank such as the Bank of England, has no direct control. If one thinks about the impact of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the increase in world food prices and grain prices, the rise in crude oil and gas prices, which partly predated the events of 2022, a lot of the inflation in the world economy uh, has been uh, has come into the UK, and, and the Bank of England doesn't, doesn't really have any control over that, other than maybe indirect effect on the exchange rate. Secondly, it takes time for higher interest rates to affect inflation. You'll know from your studies in economics at school that there are uncertain and variable time lags in the monetary policy transmission mechanism. That's the way in which interest rates work through the economy. So raising interest rates now to 4.25%, and who knows, maybe to 5%, probably won't affect inflation until maybe a year's time. So it's very hard to, di to disaggregate and dissemble and isolate the effect of interest rates where there's so, much, there's so many moving parts in the economy. And uh, related, I think, to the other point I made on the previous slide, a rising cost of servicing debt. Companies uh, have to pay their, their debts, the interest on loans. 
If interest rates go up, that may lead businesses to uh, suffer cash flow problems and they may have to cut output or shed labour. So if you're cutting output and supply, that risks making the existing supply shortages even worse, leading to rising prices for some products. Now, so I think the points I want to make really are, first of all, and most of the increase in inflation in the UK has been from outside events. There has been strong demand as we've recovered from the pandemic, but but Bank of England hasn't really had much control over inflation through interest rates. Expectations of inflation have increased. People notice price changes in the shops, in the showrooms, on the high street, on their bills that come through the, the letterbox and online. They see the inflation, so expectations of inflation have increased. Now, this risks leading to inflation becoming embedded in the economy, entrenched. And that is what worries central banks. They think, have we done enough to put a lid on inflation? So that might lead monetary policy interest rates to rise to higher levels in the UK, perhaps to 5% or more, which in turn increases the, the risks of a recession in 2023. Now, these are really, really important issues. I'm sure you're revising inflation and interest rates as part of your economics. So I hope you found this 10 minutes or so useful. If you have, uh, we'd love it if you gave it a like and maybe subscribe to our channel. Thanks for joining in, as always. Stay safe, stay curious, stay happy, and uh, see you sometime soon.